So, let's hear it for that great band. <laughs> Pat O'Leary on bass, Matt Ministeri on guitar, Scott Robinson on tenor saxophone, and our band leader tonight, John Eric Kelso. Woo. You can read about their amazing accomplishments in the program you have. They played on hundreds of recordings and alongside many of the greats of jazz. And we'll have uh, two little, one little session and one larger session later. So musicians will definitely be back. I want to thank you all for coming to the third annual Jazz and Poetry event. I'm Robert Loeb, director of the Visual Arts Library here at SVA. And we do have a wonderful program tonight. I want to thank SVA's president, David Rhodes, and uh, executive vice president, Anthony Rhodes, for their support for this evening. And I want to thank my fellow organizer, Mary Helen Hendricks, who's co-chairman of the SVA's Humanities and Science Department. And it's been a pleasure to put this together with her. I also want to thank Lori Jo Henning from the Humanities Department and Tamisha Anthony, who is my assistant in the library. And as John mentions, uh, there will be CDs and some books uh, on sale for you afterwards, right from the stage, I think. Okay, so now we turn from notes to words. Sean Singer is a highly respected poet and writer. His poems, reviews, creative nonfiction and essays have appeared in the likes of Memorius, Iowa Review, and Salamagundi. He is the recipient of an NEA fellowship, and his 2002 poetry collection, Discography, was awarded the Norma Farber First Book Award from the Poetry Society of America. Discography also won the Yale Series of Younger Poets Prize, selected by W.S. Merwin. Merwin praised Sean for, quote, the quick changes of his invention in search of provisional rightness, end quote. That sounds a lot like what jazz is about. And Sean's work has a strong connection to jazz. Not only is he a great enthusiast, but he told me that he has a personal collection of 2,500 CDs. Uh, and many of his poems reference jazz and uh, the practitioners of jazz very directly. This is what Sean told an interviewer in 2008. Jazz is a way of moving through or existing in the world. It's a way of thinking. For me, jazz is simultaneously, wait, for me, jazz is a method of how to create art. Can I create a poem that appears simultaneously spontaneous, yet inevitable, unhelpful? Don't attempt to recreate in words what you've heard in music. Instead, listen to what the music is telling you, the way to live. By this method, the lesson you learn is that your poem should sound more like you and less like anyone else drifting around the neighborhood. Please welcome Sean Singer. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. The old record rolled out of the hot machine, the scully automated lathe, rigged, covered in oil, rigged to the metal ends, dying of spin, metal on black, back to back thimble weights, diamond and rinse to a new shine, lunge and pull into circles, hundred grooves to the centimeter, calling it vinyl, midnight candle, drops onto the place with the push of the nidificus chirping needle, a bell crank lead plant resting in a red scissor over the lumps of steel, then rising with throstle smoke, jazz dust, rumbly with the blues, the old rumor monger taking us to the juke, the bambara word that is wicked, bouncing resin polymer lost to the racy suff of baby she got a phonograph and it won't say a lonesome word, baby she got a phonograph and it won't say a lonesome word, what evil have I done, what evil has the poor girl heard? That uh, the old record is supposed to uh, suggest record as a noun and a verb to record, and also the historical record as well as the physical object, even though we don't actually see records much anymore. Photo of John Coltrane, 1963. 
otherworldly and outreaching, a Parnassus of noise with a serious glint of inestimable worry on his face. O Coltrane, what will ring from your pious, gleaming Antillian euphonia, so capable, swift, with no trace, no trace of stillness? The blur of the gray, gray, and gree, gree flows hornward to the black bell of the saxophone, a cylinder of joy, an empurpled sea of heaven ebbing into hell. Ellingtonia, one. And the lamp caught fire after he put a blue cashmere sweater over it, subtle as a Nance obligato on filmy violin, two brown curves and passant, purflings ease sound out of the stank of violin parts, belly, waist, chin rest, rib, sound hole, peg box, tailpiece, rounded shoulder. Ellington was an expert on them all. Two, <coughs> libretto, holy writ. Billy Strayhorn would wake up, composed for four hours, would wake Duke, blood count or ballad for very tired and very sad lotus eaters, for example, and he'd bring his golden torso up and finish off the rest of the composition. In the morning after composing all night, Duke would open the closet full of blue cashmere sweaters, and his orchestra was playing the next morning plucky, plug ugly, pozzolana, porous, and perfect blues. Three. Daft down dilly ebullience, daibutsu ear, damselfish ectogenesis, dardanelle's edge, dark semiter down, demon ex ellipse, desirous empire, doe belly, eohippus, dovetail espalier. Four. Salieri eavesdropped Mozart, playing a word sex game. Just then, the creamy, squeezing oboe, exalted, unbolted, chemophila, umbellata, plum, beautiful music, the color of blonde night. Red plum jam on pumpernickel, a Puerto Rican hermaphrodite putting on pink lip gloss. Five, Ellington, uh, Wednesday night, Ellington, who could foreseal the slightest discolored saxophrage leaf easing between two rocks, heard through a catnap and half dozen chewed pencil tips the baby green sweet pea Billy exhale. Six, blue through blue dukedoms passed on to accept that place which comes to each of us alone. Billy later. Wounds etch themselves above and below, drink sober lungfuls of hush, blood soap and will, the threadbare noises of an amber tube and a bird. Welcome to the district of snow loneliness. My list, a towel for redness, taboos for my doll, spasms of amen. Something emerges from a cord, a pigeon egg, snow silent, resilient, secret, holding its hand toward you holding its pink spotlight, finding a Roosevelt dime, I wake up to a new sun, a clear and tender quiet in each bone. Billy blew his mama's china berry tree, ain't greased since the big bean card and not in the early black, back of the club so thick with smoke and lady up front blowing blues till my hair hurt, spurts of shiny, some tiny trouble you know, in the black fracture of night, She's back, hop dog, cutie killer, diller, face like a brown egg, beg in the black like Jack the Bear. There, lady, baby, color of a chocolate dress, juicy Lucy, that Shazam Dua, bang bang outflow sensation called Yes. I had too many husbands. Last one beat me black and blue. Then he was out the door, he said, baby, better me than you. I got good and drunk. I couldn't even see. No matter how much money I make, I ain't never been free. He used to stay out late. Now he don't come home at all. I know by that there's another mule kicking in my stall. If you don't like my ocean, don't fish in my sea. Stay out of my valley and let my mountain be. Let me be your rag doll until your china comes. If you beat me ragged, I've got to beat you some. If he walks out the door, he won't be gone long. I'll be up on the stage in my needle of song. Those are from um, the, my book that um, it came out 10 years ago, so by now I've done other things, so I'll now read some more fresher things. Uh, this poem is a response to the 20-hour documentary Ken Burns made, Jazz, mm -hmm. that um, 
caused a big kerfuffle, I guess, in the jazz world because of many criticisms, one of which was, for example, it ended in 1960. And a lot happened in jazz since 1960. Uh, and he said not enough time had passed for it to be considered history. I mean, they do documentaries on Nixon, Vietnam, so he didn't know what he was talking about. No. Ken Burns. There's no such thing as bop music, but there's such a thing as progress. Coleman Hawkins. Although jazz's sepia, acetates, and lacquers have dipped the black into silver nitrate and are faded little faders, they inflate like lungs. The pink lung with its tortoise shell shellac appears to bulge and its inseam exhales purity and inhales spoonfuls of tempo. Purity in jazz, sir, is thwarted and unutilized. 200 years of minstrels snapping their red suspenders corrode and oxidize the air. Mr. Tambo, what kind of a girl was she? Zip, she was highly polished, yes indeed, her father was a varnish maker. <laughs> you see, that rubber pork chop became something. Bechet's shimmisha wavel from its mold has been heated and mounted face to face with a hinge so that the machine opens up facing you. It is not light or intermezzo, frozen like trout beneath the flux and radimacuing of ice. It is not alpine. Eingenschlafer auf der Lauer, o ben ich der alte Ritter. Through the cracked photos breaking into creosote, superlatives douse the monolith. Virtuoso, genius, but there is a siphoning off of licking pink jam from the knife. Negativities, the integrated bands, for example, of alcoholics, Benzedrin heads, and junkies, or the deranged catastrophe of Buddy Bolden feeding his hand to a ceiling fan, or the wick saturated with amphetamines, or Buddy Rich telling the trumpet section of fuck faces that he plinked them every seven bars like a neutered werewolf. When Coleman Hawkins stood half nude like a mango in Friedlander's photo, 1956, with his curved man breasts sweating from it may not be true, he appears modern. He is not a manque nostalgic, an item logistical. He, lung of air rate, propulsive tub, urgently pumping ninths, is the living demonifuge ripping through a blanket of vanilla radio. Racial animus, intractable sources, faded scriptures, and the pinstripes of the Storyville mudheads, midwives, and the peach tin types fitted into ladies' brooches are not jazz. This strategy does not puff the uvula's blowpipe or bring an axe to the vanguard. Rather, it shuffle bucks, pantomimes, and dabs slop with a hanky. Meanwhile, as the onyx rattlesnake of the century slid by 1960, the year the fedora went up the flue, jazz too opened like a fire at a woman's ceremony. It did not end. Ryler had yet to drag the Black River into rivulets of need. Unkempt skinny dips, red vinyl seats of the southern buses, and the vinegar cloud of the tree's harpsichords were made, too, of jazz. As the bus ate the road's tape measure, the ballrooms closed, the Hickory House sewed 52nd Street into a fly trap enmeshed with liquid static. The green river you ignore is realized by the Black River growing wings beneath the shoulder blades of the hatchling. Coleman Hawkins, who morphs with allular quills into a hawk. Dark patagial marks and underwings, present on all ages and races, conjured shadows beyond the last section of the long film. You're afraid of listening to this lady? He too, with parade float head, eyes like flashing lindy hoppers, lunging with the lumpy fabric of the past, pushing his gauge, a deuce of blips, bloodstream lushes of viper, is more righteous than scumpteen codification. In closing, sir, the reed was always remoistened while you were in the booth cutting the montage sequence. But the pink sequence of Bessie Smith quenched with yielding limelight disappeared to dust like eighth notes. My button ejects and the tongue spits out the disc's rainbow. This is called Living on Nothing But Honey and Smoke for Albert Eiler and Cleveland. Evergreen leather winter wear and a honky-tonk but salty glissando, a man revealing his baby life in the dark when the dark was a scattered ambrosia, but opening plaints with dynamite and a grill and a tremolo and hard plastic reed. What is self-evident, he said, was a colored disc, the sword, the cup of indignation. I have seen the bright wall of the universe magnify ten times and eat only green things. 
But when President Johnson was a spooky longhorn, the Pope got the message, a clicking sound with his tongue, the spirit's balafon hemnick, the freak bearing. As the saxophone winds and balloons, so the vision. It wasn't funny anymore. Flowering in the very field, his legit sneers, he has sucked the air out of the room, mesmerized hyena, and brought us back on a kind of ship afloat and aflat as driftwood. And the East River took us to the foot of Congress Street Pier where our lungs had dried. Become Ashtabula, taxonomic, a burned running, a fur peeling, a pure feeling, an orange. Become an admirer. Become Olst Olmsted, Parma, and Ashtabula, where translucent quays burn with fox oil, overweight drivers, gray mosquitoes, a wood flushed with the lashing waves of pine. Her brunette radar zoned me. Gathering buckeye, rucksack, and eyeglass cloth, we became river. Ashtabula was the orange wreck of bricks, boards, and nurse. The mud slung me, part of the forest, to a new river. This isn't tenderness, you know, it's worn. The river, little cricket neck, was burning mineral, iron filing, flies and tires. A marvel how rectangular fires make unearned past efforts, so we blazed filthy nuggets to the utter gully where with sky-like Gethsemane we sneaked into the guest room all cushioning. At any rate, we were pierced. The clumps of soot hit the windows all black now, and I exhaled. Become a wizard, a ghost, a spirit, a saint, a bell, a Cleveland, the final cadence, two octaves up. Become an admirer. Become Ashtabula or become Asiento, the darkness of river, aspergillic, breaking into a shunch. Become, yes, admirer. Scott Joplin. Son of a slave, your birthday is no more exact than a petal. Sunflower, you have no need to worry. Your piano rolls have played in middle and upper class homes. Maple leaf across the plains where it is gold, we worry. You neither improvise nor play blues, but compose. Chrysanthemum, our ways of living differ, like worry. The weaponized invisible boundaries of America keep you. Eugenia, there is reason to worry. You are composing, but not recording. Only rolls with holes. Lily Queen, others have been pieces of worry. The reason you asked and the reason I don't have the answer is the same. Heliotrope, let's just not worry. Syphilis, with its attendant dementia, paranoia, and paralysis. Pineapple, your leaves each veer and heave toward worry. Piano is a hammer with action. In other words, the sounds produced when the strings are distinguished. The harpsichord and the spinet, plucked of their wrought wires, are unlike this clavature, originally limited to pianoforte, than the modern upright. Bartolomeo Cristofori, hammering his gravis cymbala as Florence turned in the dusky mode into dusky notes, between one and three strings per note, that is. These strings are strung to their attention. I myself am strung between 180 and 200 pounds in a frame, though not of iron. Covered with felt, I feel my pedals sustaining and dampering, allowing me to continue to sound even after I, my keys, am no longer depressed. My soft felt produces quiet. Notice my compass in excess of seven octaves. My lyra, my resonance boden, my gehausa. The legba veve, or graphical invocation, guardian of the crossroads. It's a picture of the legba veve. Folk dance, in the Yoruba pantheon of Benin, Legba's a trickster gatekeeper. The New Orleans brass bands weren't screaming Leba, it was always Legba. To worry equals to blur, transgression equals the crossing of a line. Ornamental floral patterns, Beware of, be aware of its camouflage, which is subversive. Schmatazite, ragtime. All the magic, bristle topaz, vine smoke, rust, chalkboard, apricot glaze, Montserrat Palmyra, sky's gray crystal, a bridge's bizarre design. Afrofuturism. A brass tube in an S shape is the matrimonial yoke and the numerology of a gold sewn cloak. Calfskin pendants and a pump's quilted glaze, crimson and azure, some dumb hovering maze. Sun Ra said, People are interested in everything but true wisdom, like hoot owls, nails, ghouls, pyramids, and triangles, 
A funky donkey tightens and passes by as the girls sip ginger ales. Hemphill said, people keep looking rearward for the tradition. The tradition is forward, not what you did last week, but this week. The blues is a loop we barrel through. Bloom into each other, beam to rough hewn beam. Move your legs, sweet darling. Uh, uh, Max Roach slash Max Ernst. Play weed up for an oasis and enamel the Zephyrine shadow. Unwrap the sunlight gumming the lovelorn tangerine. Grip the fleet beams of the window bracket, seersucker. Rubber blossoms collapse. It's a canary floridita stirring the brushwork. With two brushes and a phone book, Max made everyone sink into swelling movement. Raillery, you say. Hey, you say. Firmament made me say, you say. Laser layering in a coin and a 45 a day. Play that fen, play bay. How you paid a due when Diz displayed the beret over the gray? The wind's tight lamp announced its nine presets, vanded of copper, volcanoclastic, the blue whisper in a crystal. All the celestial spaces have their maxes, also volvoxes and diatoms shining like foxes. The ride haunts the beach as the waves pounce the cliffs. A bunker outpost on mirrored shore as the glass shines. Metal rain pieces the blood root grass in clandestine night. The drums make an echo through the air. The air, clean as a bell, remains outside. Each note is heavy with nitrogen like a storm. It's an Ubu Imperator swinging his red castle. He's a seedless water former, but he fits a viewer's nerves within his nerves because style is the tailor. Well, I saw Max Roach perform once, and he actually played a, um, a, not a phone book, but a snare drum. That was it. And it was just astounding to see. I mean, you lose all concept of yourself outside of what's happening in the performance. It was really a terrific thing. <laughs>